Your presence here is a good proof that the European Year of Creativity and Innovation is both a topical issues and the most important one. I hope that the content of our program today may stimulate your innovative instincts. As you will soon see and hear, this seminar brings together distinguished representatives from different fields of interest. Our third objective is to disseminate good practice, stimulate education and research, and to promote policy debate and development for the better future of Europe and Europeans. If uh, I'm about to answer your question, which is in the title of the seminar, what can we do? So I can say we have to do much more that we are doing. We think that we are doing quite a lot for innovation, but in fact, we are quite conservative. We think that we are extremely creative, but in fact, we are old fashioned. There is a great potential in culture which should be developed. There is a great potential in education which need to be developed. Uh, to deliver some change uh, and to be able to have some change in uh, our innovative or new way of life. Of course, creativity and innovation is linked to individuality, individual personality. So then I, I like very much uh, uh, this first word of, the, of the, the slogan or of the motto of the year of uh, creativity and innovation, which is imagine. First, we have to be able to imagine. The uh, right to innovate and to ideate, if you like, is a very basic human right. It's inalienable. It actually should be written in constitution. But when I ask, should people have the responsibility to innovate, a lot of people say, no, we can't take it this far. And so I've defined something called innovation democracy, which I think is a call to EU this afternoon to suggest we have to make the European community as an innovation democracy, place where everyone has an inalienable right uh, to innovate, but may choose to forego that right. But I still think not the responsibility. This vision is actually based on an idea of change that is much more experimental, that is much more grassroots, where everyone has a right to, for trial and error, kind of like the oddsters, and we are not bound by the formal roles that we have, perhaps. Um, I think too often we, or at least the members of the general public, the average Joes and so forth, uh, associate innovation with uh, technological breakthroughs uh, with the latest gadget and so forth. Um, and there's nothing wrong with this, but it does paint the picture that innovation is somebody else's job, perhaps somebody working in the R&D department somewhere. And uh, we believe that more meaningful, impactful innovation um, uh, can take place at the, the systems level, if you like, while looking at our own organizations, uh, um, basic building blocks, if you like, uh, fundamental assumptions, uh, paradigms even. And I think the present uh, financial crisis is, a, is a, a cute example of this and how innovation is needed at the, um, at the systems level. The only sustainable form of wealth comes from renewable resources, of which the human imagination is the most renewable of all. Of course, sunlight, uh, wind, tide, etc., are also renewable resources. If we put the renewable resources of our imagination at the disposal of sunlight, wind, tide, etc., um, we can, I think, invent ourselves uh, out of our present problems. Wealth inheres not in hoarded materials or in tokens, bits of money, Wealth inheres in relationships. We make our relationships more and more valuable, and anything else is fool's gold. It is the relationship between people, and most of all the relationship between people and the environment that creates wealth. The EIT is a big experiment, in my uh, judgment. It uh, tries to uh, exploit the cultural diversity all around Europe in order to stimulate a high-level collaborative culture.
in certain areas, we are no longer competitive with the rest of the world. And I think with a, a decent amount of money and a better culture of relationships and environment, uh, we should be able uh, to come uh, to uh, be on the forefront uh, of certain developments. What are our, our aims? Uh, first of all, to, to make it possible for the, and help the Finnish universities to, to react to, to the changes in the operational environment uh, by, for example, diversifying their uh, funding base. The universities will be able to have their own human resources development policies. Uh, they, the, the, the staff of the universities won't be civil servants anymore. Uh, universities will have more latitude in the management of their own, own finances. There can be two types of universities, uh, those under public law, companies under public law, or, or, or foundations under private law. The steering system and also management, strategic management, and even leadership of the universities will be strengthened. The reason why the resources are important is that in Scandinavian countries and in many other European countries, what has happened over the past years is that the university personnel and, and the expenditure has been going up, but the basic funding for research has, has remained at the same level. Because of this hunt for the money, you know, what has happened in at least in Scandinavian universities is that the professors who are most successful in their research and get most money for their research from external grants don't have any more time for teaching, which is a great loss for the, for the students. So, so our aim is to increase the resources and also make sure that our best teachers have also, best professors have time also to teach at the basic level at the university. We hope that this will motivate the students, it will inspire the students, but it will also give them a sense of responsibility because sometimes also the students might consider universities a place of, of spending some time and this is not very efficient use of the taxpayers' money. So we're trying to get them inspired so that they push through their studies enthusiastically and uh, in a little bit more shorter time than, than, than is, is common these days. The uh, creativity studies uh, started uh, early 1950s and so there is uh, more than uh, uh, 50 years experience of that. And the uh, uh, studies, academic interest in innovation is, is even, even older than that. And the uh, relationship between these two, uh, these two concepts, creativity and innovation, at least as, uh, uh, the way as I see it, I quote here, here Teresa Amabile and his colleagues, all innovation begins with creative ideas. So in this sense, creativity is a, I'd say, the most important precursor for innovation. The Anglo-Saxon ideas have dominated the last years also the way of life in culture, in eating habits, in democracy. It's not the ancient Greek democracy. It's Westminster. It's opposition here, government here, fight. That's why I like the European Parliament. We don't do it here. We don't fight. We are building bridges. We are trying to make what you also said in, in your presentation, to, to find um, common solutions, because that's innovation, to come up with consensus-driven sometimes, but a common solution. Now, this is the real um, challenge for us, to be innovative in how to leave the paradigm and how to find a new paradigm. Just to give you one idea, I think the dignity of life, the value of life could be, could be a solution.